Hey everybody, morning, Sunday morning. Good morning, it's a good Sunday morning. Um, we're here today to do something that um, a little bit bigger, a little bit different from my usual. And um, let me just explain to you right away. <laughs> and so what we're gonna do, actually first cheers, cheers everybody. <laughs> it's not beer, but um, my cotton morning cup of coffee. So cheers. Hello, Lyle from Florida. And I'm not sure how many people will be watching this morning, but um, normally I always go outside and, and today though I wanted to try something a little bit different because I'm doing it on a board. I'm doing it on a, on a board um, to size. I'm trying to get ready for these plein air events and this is a board, a plein air board, uh, um, a, a watercolor board. And I'm just going to try to start doing my watercolors on paper that I mount to board or by board. I know that Legion Papers is going to be mounting their paper watercolor book to um, uh, boards also. Um, that's coming up. I think it's, I'm not sure if it's um, out there yet, but they're, they have aluminum board that they're going to be putting stuff on and the watercolor paper on it is just amazing. So we're going to be start doing, working on that. And also it's a size so that you can just wax it and then you're all good to go, which is framing it. No glass, no mat. And so let's go to, um, and also <laughs> I just, uh, my website, um, finally, this company I just, um, that I use for my broadcasting, finally I can use my website and I can actually scroll through my website. And so I'm actually on my website. And so I put all my, I put all down here. If you go, I have my new recommended products page. See that right there in the middle? So click on there and it gives you all the products, all my new products that I've got going on. And so these are all the price I recommend and hit links and you just you click on it. You go to the links. And um, here's the wax and these liner brushes. And so it just takes you to that item and then just, you can buy it here. It takes you to either Amazon, Blix, wherever I could find it, where I bought it from. And usually I buy all these and um, tested them. And so they're all good. They're all good to go. <laughs> and so that is um, the page, the products page. I just put that together so that you can finally go in there and look for what I'm talking about sometimes when I'm, when I'm talking about like um, this transom palette I'm using today, this um, this one at the bottom here, this transom palette, I'll be using that one today with my gouache, and I use, put my gouache into that. So that's something, um, finally, I can show you guys. Um, they just did an update, and finally took away the, my, at first it was working, but then it stopped working for the longest time, but here's working again. And I use my supplies always. And so let's go to our value study. I really want to talk about this, and this is what we're all talking about lately. Morning, Dave. And so, um, so about this, about Notan and about designing and stuff. And today's picture that I'm doing right here is if you look at it, it's um, very much like Thomas Schaller does all his work like this. If you look at um, Thomas Schaller's work, he brings all the silhouette shapes or his black, his darkest dark is always in the front. And then he has a middle tone and a background. And um, I take it more towards like where this is just all the whole foreground. Everything in the foreground is your darks. And, and is on the side here, the, even though this is a middle tone in these buildings, that's my light. So that's a really easy design, really simple design. This is a middle tone, but more towards the light. So there's my light and dark pattern. Very simple. And this, like, again, I said, look up Thomas Schaller and you'll see that this is the kind of subject or design he always does. Most of, I would say 90% of his work has this design element in it, where the foreground, and a lot of times when you're doing a, um, a landscape, this is the kind of design you get, is a light background and everything in the foreground is darker, is in part of your dark, and meaning black and white again. I'm always talking about black and white, like the no tan design. All right, so we're just gonna be doing that today. And again, we're doing it on board, so let me just go to my tabletop here. And so as you can see, I'm doing this again on board. This is a crescent board but it's um 16 by 20 so i can just when i get done with this i don't have to tape it down it's 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 very solid and so when i when i um when i paint it when i'm done i can just wax it and then put it into a frame no glass no i'll wax it with the um cold wax and then i'll just put it right into a frame no glass no mat board and you can even sell it for more so i i just find that i'm trying to get all my students to maybe start to stop um doing your watercolors on paper that you tape down because then you have to custom frame them usually uh, because you have to make the mat or you gotta get matted and you gotta make sure that it's the right size anyways. So I'm starting right from the get-go. I know right away this will fit right into a frame. And when you're doing a plein air event, this is very important because 
I don't want to be sitting there and framing with glass and mat board when you're at a, at a plein air event, you know, so um, I really am trying to learn how to do more on my board. And actually, there are a lot of the companies that are putting their paper on boards now, and Legion Paper is one of them, and they're, they're putting it on aluminum panels, which is really amazing. I don't have one here right at the moment. I was testing it for them, and it's just wonderful. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And so as soon as they can become available, I'll let you know about that. And I'll put them in for my page also. So let's get going here. And this is a very simple composition. Again, like I said, it's the background is all light and the foreground is all dark. And so I can paint my background through everything because it, except for a couple of these flags, which I'll rub out or I'll just put gouache on there because today I'm going to be using my gouache and my watercolors. So I want to make it thick. I start out thin and I get thicker and thicker as I go along. And my next two workshops that I've got going is the next one is going to be in Grand Marais, which is a really short one. It's only like a three hour class basically at the Grand Marais art event. And then I have Dillman's and Dillman's, you don't have to bring any supplies. And so sign up for that class at Dillman's in Wisconsin. Northern Wisconsin, and there I bring all the watercolor and the gouache. It's going to be a watercolor gouache class, and that's for four days, and um, you don't have to bring anything. So sign up if you want to learn how to do this. Okay, so let's go, and um, if you notice that the sky is white, I'm going to keep it white. I'm not going to be going into something that um, it's kind of like um, it's so bright, the sky. Some people like to put blue in there. I'm just going to keep it white, and I'm going to leave it less um, vibrant, and I know a lot of these new artists or these really popular artists they're using a lot of grays and a lot of neutral tints and tones neutral tones and grays in their work and so i'm going to try to do that a little bit here and so in the background i'm just going to go right into the buildings and just start looking for the buildings and you can even use my watercolor and my gouache together you know if this is not acrylic gouache this is watercolor gouache and so i can use them together and if i even put a lot of water in there then they're just going to be um they're going to be transparent, even though they have opaqueness to them. <clears throat> if you use them wet in the wet, they become very, very, very transparent. And so I'm going in here with grays. I'm going to make cool grays in the background. So I'm going to go with some more cool grays in the background. And as I come forward, I'm going to get warmer. And these buildings, you know, it depends on how detailed you want to get. I didn't draw them very detailed. And I'm not worrying about the flags that are lighter in front. I will, again, like I said, either rub out or I will take it. And one thing I say about when you're working on a panel, this is this panel is not as textury as um, many papers are. It's not. It's cold pressed, but it's it's a little bit it's a little bit flatter than that. And so I'm not thinking about the flags that are flying there. I know there's some of them are, are lighter, but don't even think about that. I'll put that in later. I'm going to go down here and I'm just putting in get my grays warmer. And what does that mean? I I'm put some orange into my gray. I have gray on gray, which is right here. I have Davies gray, which is more of a green gray. And I have all these grays down in this area. And I'm also going to make my grays with black. I can take some black with the white, and that makes a gray too. So here's some grays. I get some more. They'll be warmer as they come forward, meaning they're more beige-like and stuff. And I'm just going to put in the lights and we always start with our lights right and so this is my lights and it's going from light to dark light to darker but it's still my light area these buildings are still my lights because the that's the design i was talking about that um thomas schaller always uses the foreground being silhouetted almost shapes against the light background if you have questions please let me know hey barbie Morning, morning. I was thinking all day yesterday what I should be painting and what I should, you know, I was thinking of all kinds of places to go and do plain air. I just got a new phone though. Um, well, I didn't get a new phone. My other one broke, it, it, it broke. And so if you ever have um, the chance to get insurance on a, on a good phone, take it. I've had insurance on my phone now. And um, I basically, this is my fourth fourth new phone the same phone or the same and the same phone and the same camera because at first the camera would always go um something about the program it just would not the camera would stop working and so they would send me a new one you know it's the same model though it's a it's a 20 and um but i just cracked the lens on it on the front and the back and so i i you know i'm getting everything switched over moved over 
And so I didn't think that would be a good thing to do today, getting out there and trying to work that first. Because there's always problems that when that you have to put back on when you get a new a new phone. And so I'll do a little practice one. So here again is my middle tones. And a lot of times to get middle tones and grays, I just kind of go in my palette and I mix all the colors that are dirty in there. And that'll give you a good gray too. Like just don't clean off your palette and you get some great grays in there. <laughs> so I'm just going to make this. Again, this is my lights. I will go my darker details later into this building, but it is about just my lights. Just my lights area right now. If you have questions, just let me know. Get this out of here. All right, and so keep this light, keeping it light. I can go right into the people too, um, because the people are gonna be darker. So I can just kind of go in there, get the middle tones in there. Last weekend in Lake Geneva, that was really a, a super lot of fun. It was fun going up there and um, painting the boat. So I do plan on getting back out there and practicing a little bit for the plein air event in September. I'm going back up to up to Duluth and then to Grand Marais to do the do the Grand Marais plein air event. That's always a fun one. I really enjoy that one. So I'm gonna be up there. So I'm gonna practice a little bit getting out big out there because I've gotten a bunch of new things, a new palette, new um, you set up you know, from last year. Last year I made my own one, but this year I've got that one I bought from Sienna, from Jack Richardson, which again is on my products page. You can see that. So again, this is my lights, and you know, as I'm keeping it not so vibrantly colored, um, which is fine. You know, it's it's cool. Not everything has to be super super colorful, but you decide on that. That's just work your values, and that's more important. And all this now is just going to be the lights. And this right in here, I'll get some lights in there. Because the whole foreground will come forward when I put my darks in there. And so this is just my, my background lights and mediums. And so the mediums, I can wait until this dries a little bit and then get some of the bigger details in there, the larger details. Some of them I can try to put in while it's wet, get the soft edges. And... Um, have fun with the wash, you know, what kind of washes are you known for is basically is what I try to tell my students is everybody does it a little bit differently. And that's a big difference is that how they put the paint on, when they put the paint on, how detailed they get, you know, your, your style just develops on its own. And it's just to, from all the practicing and trying things and, and the different materials that you use. So don't worry too much about your, your, your style that just develops on its own. You'll just develop it all on your own by just painting. Just paint and you'll develop it. I sometimes find that I'm not getting a, um, a distinctive style because I try too many things. <laughs> but, you know, that's okay, too. I just like to do a lot of different type of things. And like I did right now, this is using gouache and watercolor together. And most traditional watercolors would never use these together. You know, they want everything transparent. And I'm actually kind of liking it. I kind of like that look of a little bit of um, opaqueness to it and some thickness to it. Some thickness to the watercolor makes it look kind of cool. So I'm just going in here getting some some of the buildings to very loosely just representative of, of, um, of the buildings. I'm not going to go in there. I'm not going to make every little window. Um, that's not I'm not that tight. I'm not a photorealism guy. Hyperrealist, I guess you could say. I'm more of an impressionist. I think I'm more of an impressionist, and that's why I get an impression of what, what the items look like. All right, so there's my lights. Basically, that's all my lights, and I'm gonna keep the white of the of the sky and the white of the street. I'll leave that to be my whites. I will get some flags in there that'll be white in there later. And now let's just go to our darks, our big mediums and our big darks. So our big mediums would be this building over here on the side. And so, and also my darks at the same time. And I'll keep them really dark so they come forward. And I will also 
make them a little bit more colorful, but not too colorful. I'm still trying to keep it down in color because I want to have that look of um, kind of grays, a lot of grays. So then when I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is this trolley right here, I'm gonna use my reds and some reds in there. So I will have a touch of really bright red in there. That's what many of those artists like El Alvaro do. They kind of let it, all this dark come in here. I'm actually gonna stand here for a second because this is a bigger painting. Normally I don't wear 16 by 20. Usually I work the, 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 the 11 by, 11 by 14 or 10 by 14 size or 11 by 15 is a quarter sheet size of watercolor paper. But this is a size that I can just um, 16 by 20 all the way to the edge. And so I can frame this right, right from the get go. I don't have to worry about it. Worry about um, mat board and then glass and, you know, this will be very easy to frame and mat and not mat or just frame so here i'm putting a bunch of colors in there and i'll put a little bit of warmer colors farther forward i also put some some this little blue some opaqueness to it and i can actually put the thick stuff on later for the details that's what i that's what i use the the thick um gouache for i don't use it put it on now because i kind of like the look of large areas to look like watercolor there where you have a nice thick wash but transparent and then when i do my little things that's where i'm going to go for my for my opaqueness to it because then i can just put it on there thick like in this center of interest area i can actually use the medium and make it thick and that'll come out really nicely then so this part should be a little bit lighter so i'm just going to pull that out a little bit i'm just going to pull that out so don't be afraid of pulling out paint too I'm just taking and sucking it up back like a thirsty brush and just sucking it back into my brush down here. I'm just going to suck up a little bit of that right there. The nice thing is, is that I can dip into all these colors and it doesn't really matter which one I use because they are all watercolor. Some are more opaque, meaning that they cover better. It's like, you know, when you're painting your walls and you want really good covering paint so they'll cover up the darks or lights or especially the darks. So this covers up, gouache covers up a little bit better. And over here, I'm gonna start with the people. I'm just gonna put a little, and you notice how in my big washes, there's blue, there's red, there's black, there's all kinds of colors. So I don't stop with um, just one color. I put a bunch of colors that I think could reflect into that area that are gonna be part of the painting. If you have questions, just let me know. I know a lot of people watch my Sunday one afterwards or later in the week and stuff, and that's fine. And then you can also still ask questions and just ask them into the description of the of the video. Just put them down there. And I also answer them. I'll try to answer them. I mean, I get back right away, but I usually go look and they always let me know when somebody's asking questions in the description after the video is done. And so that's the one big area here. And so now I'm going to go from there. Give it a little texture and now we're getting smaller and smaller and then this grouping of people in the back there i'm going to take a smaller round or my big round brush which is look at the point on that thing and this is a number 18 usually i sell 16 i have this 18 one i just got and i'm just trying to see how well this one works and so i'm just going to put back here um back there i'm going to make it a little bit more lighter a little bit lighter back there so it stays back and then I'll go to like do the tops of these guys' heads and just kind of blend that in. Some kind of object here and there's the light poles, which will be part of my dark details. This is not my details yet. This is my large area of darks, large area of middle tones, which are the people. But there's so many people in here. I'm not going to do every individual person. As, I'm just doing as a whole, as a really darker. And these guys up here are going to be colorful and darker and really pop forward. And again, this is where being an impressionist, I'm not doing every single person in this thing. I am doing it, but I'm doing it together as a whole. And then I'm just gonna go in here. Again, making it a little bit lighter back here, not quite as dark <clears throat> as in the photo even, because I want this to stand back. And when I want the darks that are in front to be even darker and more contrasty, so they come way forward and have a lot more color. 
and I'm working my way over here to the to the cable car here. And that will be, this is part of my center of interest, this area, this whole area. It's not just a thing. It's this whole area will be my area of interest, my center of interest. People call it center of interest, but I like to call it area of interest. Go around these people. The people in front, I'm going around their heads so I can give them a little rim lighting. And I'll put a little color in there too. Just dump it in. Once it's wet, then you can dump some color in there, making it float. You know me and my floating, my pigment has to float. I'm going around the larger people in the front and then here the legs. I can put the legs in of these people back there. Going negative painting these people in front by going around them. People in the back are just a bunch of a bunch of lights and darks and and you know other people, I mean our brains are um, are smart enough to know that we're in a city and there's a group of something there, right? What would it be? It would be the people, cars, it's in the middle of the street. You don't always have to explain everything to the viewer. The viewer can, uh, they, our brains are all smart enough to know what's actually happening in a lot of these pictures. Now I'll go with my smaller round brush because I want to get a little bit more on the cable car. I'm going to get the middle tones and I'm going to use a pretty bright red. I'll use some Scarlet Lake. Scarlet Lake is the color I use for my red. It's a really, really bright red. Now it's not really bright on my brush because I have a lot of um, other pigments mixed in with it, but that's okay. I don't need a bright red except for maybe way up in front here. Going around this guy here to get ribbon lighting. Then I'll get a really bright, um, brilliant orange and this red together will make a really bright, bright red. And here's like the, the light of the... I always make, always make things darker too. So here I definitely want to make it as bright as I can. And then I can always tone it down later. It's easier to tone down the brightness than trying to make it brighter later. And there we have a, just a little bit of light there. And all these scenes back here, you know, I, it depends on how much I want to get in there. But I'll, when I do my middle tones, I'm going to go there. That's more detail. Even though it's um, light details, it's still detail. So I can wait for that until I get these big areas done of mediums. This is like the big mediums and darks. So I'll just go up here and tap roof tap. Then these windows. Let's reflect some of the windows in blue. This is all going to be dark down here. Again, I'm, I always go light to dark. You have to put in the lights first so that you can negative paint around them and get your dark. So always think of where the lights are first. That's more important. And then you can get the darks afterwards. Because you don't want to lose those lights. The lights are important to keep. And then you have darks, you can negative paint around them to get all those other things going. All right, so this side now, the people will go in there. And look how I'm just going into darks. I'm just picking up the darks. It doesn't, I'm not looking for a particular dark. Just anything on that side is pretty dark. Just grab it. Anything dark is fine. And then once it's wet, you can add other colors into that dark. Because that's what my value, that's what my no tan says. This is the whole foreground is all dark, all the people. Now these people over here, you notice that they're a little bit lighter because they're more in the sun. So let's, let's lighten them up a little bit. Just, I just realized that they're a little bit lighter. I can make them more colorful too here. I don't want to make them as contrasty as these in, in front. So let's make these a little bit lighter. And again, I'm gesturing at them. If you want to spend time and drawing them really well, like, and make them, like if you make these really tight, then you got to make these even tighter. So you'll be seeing like exactly what kind of um, shirt they're wearing. <laughs> so you'll see it really um, uptight if those are back here are really tight. It all depends on how detailed you want to get with your work. And this is just still a big area. I know I'm doing little pieces like, like it is a um, details, but it's detail in a large area though. So it's still part of my second step, which is my large mediums and large darks. This is a large medium that happens to be a bunch of little people though. I mean, a bunch of people that are the smaller people in my picture. 
impression. It's just an impression of them. And I'll make them different colors. Once it's wet, then I can drop other colors in there. Some light colors, some dark colors, and keep it gray. You know, if you want, if you want to just do a, like a a one color study where you're just using black and white, basically, you can do that too with one color. It could be like all browns, or it could be all sepias. You know, that's that's fine too. Or if you want to make a limited palette, make it make it a limited palette of just using you know, two colors or three colors. And that is actually very good for um, beginners to do is limit your palette to a few colors so that you don't have to think about the color so much. Here's a little shadowing that's going down the street from them. Here's a person on the side here. Now when I get to doing these guys and way up in front here, they're going to make them really dark, almost black, where um, you cannot see any color. Well, you're going to see some color, but I'm going to keep it really dark, really dark, dark. Sometimes they'll be purple, sometimes they'll be more warm, cool, but, and also I'm going to get thicker. Again, now I'm getting to where I'm getting thicker with, with my, with my paint. And that's where the gouache comes in. That's where I'm going to start putting gouache and using gouache to make it thick. And basically the thickness is part of the, 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 um, technique that I'm using. It almost looks then like an oil painting or an acrylic where it's like thick on top and that's what oil painters have and that's what they use to make their work look better is that they make it um thick physically thicker th th that watercolor doesn't have when you're just using watercolor as a traditional watercolor this guy and so now let's get some color in here I'm putting a little red by his shoulder, like pretending like it's reflecting off the thing, which it's not. It wouldn't do that. But as an artist, I can do that. I can reflect the red into his coat because he's like close. He's like in that area. It's just a trick, actually, to get your eye to make it look like it's reflecting in there and get that color somewhere else in your painting. See, I use black. I don't mix my blacks. I just take a black and I put color into it where a lot of teachers will teach you to mix your blacks and then, you know, mix them with colors. I do opposite. I say, get your black and then put color into it. And then that's one, another way of mixing, uh, mixing your black to make, make them more colorful. So I'm just going in here and getting all the people now more closer up. If you guys have any questions, just let me let me know. I know there's probably not uh, people this morning. <laughs> I always try to get every, everybody up too early. I was up really early this morning for some reason. And let's get these guys really dark. You know, what do, what do people, when they're walking down the street, what do they have on them? Do they have, you know, a a backpack, do they have a briefcase, you know, a shopping bag, a purse, you know, all those things you, you got to put in there. They're not just people. I know it's a lot of people just put in, all the people are just walking, you know, with nothing, you know, they're just walking. They, they have these stick figures that they just put in and every person the same, you know, and you can't do that when you're doing the um, kind of gesturing at them. Some of them, like I said, like some of them, you'll make different colors. Some of them, you will um, one uh, one leg up like they're walking and one leg's higher and we'll put shadows on them but then you have to think of what they're wearing and what they have on and what they're or, or do they have a cane do they have a walker do they have a bicycle next to them do different things so that each person may have a little bit something different about them in the picture or look at the picture a lot of times they do already show you know the people what what they're doing and how they're different if you make them look too much the same, and I notice that when people are making them up, they always make their paint pictures, their people all look the same. Like everyone is the same, doing the exact same thing. And so just vary that up a little bit. And also don't make them all men, uh, you know, vary them up a little bit. So there's some women, some men, maybe a dog here and there, or a pet. <laughs> it's just that it's fu funny because when I'm teaching it, I when I'm teaching how you do Bob's Blobs, 
or David Stabs, those are where you adjust your people. It always ends up, each one of the people that they do is the same. And we do, I say, just make these blobs and then just go with the blobs and see what they're doing. But then decorate the blobs with like purses and long hair and, you know, different kinds of jackets, maybe an umbrella. You know, what is that person holding? <laughs> This person actually has a hoodie on, I noticed in there. And so things like that, just realize what they're wearing or maybe sleeveless. I mean, there's so many different ways and it also depends on where they're at. This is like downtown. So they're, gonna, they're not gonna have their swimming suit trunk on. You know, normally they don't, but. <laughs> hey, Sophia, good morning. The reds I'm using are Scarlet Lake and um, Brilliant Orange. Brilliant orange Holbein colors. Scarlet Lake is my good to go to red. I, I find it to be the brightest red you can possibly get. And it's not a really expensive color either. Like I know the cadmium colored people like the cadmium red. I, I like this better. I like um, the Scarlet Lake a lot better. And it comes in the gouache and it comes in the, in the watercolor. Now this guy in front here, I would, like I wouldn't give him a white shirt. I'm going to make him the darkest. And so let's really darken him up over here in the front. And I can make it almost black. And then I, I can reflect a little color into that. And maybe the, he's, he looks like he's got some kind of um, strap around his shoulder. And so making this really dark. And then I'll add the corners. What I'll do on the corners, I'll make some red on the, on the edges. And then his arms are free. And so that's going to be more warm. And then nice and dark. I'm going to actually just use black right here. Wet it as I go along. There, I'm leaving the strap light. And then maybe the, the actual, the whatever he's carrying, I'm going to make that really bright red. See, the bright red then kind of, and maybe I'll make the bright red on here too. This guy right here. Let's, let's actually make him, where's Wild Dog? Here we go. I'll give him stripes. <laughs> Again, you don't want to make them all the same. Make them different a little bit. Maybe this is a female. He has a striped shirt on. A lot of grays. You know, use grays. You don't have to make everything colorful either. You don't, I, especially a scene like this, it's not really that colorful a scene. So I'm using a lot of warms you can see up here. And then later on, I'll be putting the shadowing back in because the shadowing got kind of light that it, my first wash, that should have been a little bit darker, but that's one of the, my hardest things to teach students is to get dark enough in the first wash. You gotta make it look wrong to make it look right. Um, the reds, are they staining? Um, it all depends on what you're using them on. A lot of times staining, it depends on what you're putting, applying them to, like a hot press usually. You know, then a lot of these colors will stain because it's just like laying on top and staining the paper. And if it's soft paper, you know, too, like you, you can't scrub it out as much as you can some that are like arches, you can scrub out pretty well on them. So it all depends. But um, I don't think they're um, a huge staining color. Like they're not like a crinacridone or a, um, like a, a, like a phthalo color. I don't think they're that staining. But I would actually want them to be staining because I want them to be really bright. And so I want them to penetrate and give me that brightness of the red. And when I, when I use Brilliant Orange together with, with this um, Scarlet Lake, man, the, the red is almost like, it almost looks like it's um, fluorescent. I've had some students use it when we're doing um, limited palette. And oh my gosh, they were just so bright. It's such a bright red. This guy's got red pants on too. <laughs> so we're, we're, getting, we're getting good here. We're getting a lot of darks in here. There's his legs. And this is a bigger painting. This is 16 by 20. And like I said, normally I work half this size, 11 by um, 10 by, or 15 by, 15 by 11, 11 by 15 is usually what I work, the quarter shade, but then it's by the time you get the tape on there and it's about 10 by 14. 
So this is 16 by 20 all the way to the edges. So this is a little bit more work and it's going to take me a little bit longer because I got to fill in a little bit more, but it probably won't do that much longer because I'm, I'm again, it's just uh, it's not a super detailed where I'm putting in every single detail that you see. It's more, you know, it's a little bit more, um, what am I thinking of? What's the word? Um, impressionistic. <laughs> so I'm doing a little bit more impressionistic so that it don't have to get everything in there that's in the photograph. And I don't even care to make it look like a photograph. I just want it to look. So here's the shadowing that's coming around the building. And I'm going to put some thick paint on these to clean things up a little bit too. Because that's like, I don't have to even put the, the edges on there because what I can do is I can use that with when I use my thick paint. I can use the um, the gouache. Here, I'm just gonna let this go on the side here. Let some of this bleed together. So let's see. This is all in shadow in here, but I kind of I'm not sure if I want to put it all in shadow. I kind of like having some of these people I have like little lines there, and then the. Train the trolley there. We'll put the shadow over that. And let's just. And I'm using, see how I'm using my dirty colors in my palette? I just kind of mix them all together and that'll give me a nice gray. I know it's going to give me a gray. It may be either cool or warm. And so you just decide if it's you want it warmer, just add some red to it. But it's not so thick either. It's not, it's a very, it's almost like a tint of color. I'm not making it really thick. It's not a big wash where. Um, you have a lot of pigment floating. It's just pretty much a tint of color over this. And see how I go over the people, and now this will soften the edges too at the same time. While I'm put a little bit of this down here. All right, and so we're getting close to now. Now we got um, our big, big mediums and big darks. Right, that's all the big mediums and big darks. There's probably still a little bit of medium over here. That can be a little bit more detail, like in the buildings. And so I'm going to go in here and get a little bit more of the building. That's, I like when I'm working buildings, I always like the flat brush because everything's rectangular in a building usually. So I use a flat brush for that. Let me put this a little smaller so I can read you guys stuff. It's a little bit too big here on my screen. <laughs> Cover it up a little bit. All right. So let's go in here, get some grays that are middle tones, mediums. And that's this whole area right here. There's, um, you know, it shows the windows and all that little intricate stuff in there, but I'm basically going to make it not as intricate as it is in the photo, but just a gesture of what it is. And I can just like dot it a little bit where I think there's details. And again, I'm looking for the big picture. I'm looking for where can I get the big picture of light and darks. And I have my darks all done, right? My big, my big mediums and darks are pretty much done. So this is, this is my light area, really. So these shouldn't be quite as dark as this. Because this is not part of my dark um, design. This isn't part of my, my lights. And that's the whole thing about Natan is that I want you to always remember that you have to watch your lights and dark pattern. You can't sift from that. Now this is more of in the gray, so it's okay to get some of this to look kind of um, close to the darks. And that's okay because there's a little bit of gray in here. There's a little bit of where it's switching into the lights. And so it's okay to put a little bit of that in when you actually go to painting. But the design of the whole thing, the very beginning design of it is that this is your light. This is your light area. These flags are our, part of our dark area too. Even though there's some white flags in there that are in the light and they'd be against this dark, they still are part of the dark part of my, my design. I've been, I, this week I, um, I got a bunch of uh, painting or photographs from you guys. I'll be putting them together in a video and explain to you what I did to them. Because I'm going to show you what how I would paint them and how I decided to design them. Um, some of my I can't paint because I don't think I would have to change a lot of things. So I I'm going to show you what why the reason I wouldn't paint the certain images that you sent me. 
Some are super great that you don't have to do anything to because they're just already perfect and you don't have to do anything to them. And so that's all going to be in this week's newsletter. So sign up for my newsletter if you're not if you're new. Um, you can also get my newsletter just go on my website. Um, it's always on there. There's always links to, to every website or every um, newsletter I've ever done is on archived. So on the front page, there's a there's a button for archived newsletters. You can always go in and check out old ones too. I'm just going in here now and getting again the middle tones and then just getting the look of like buildings that are um, have a lot of things going on in there and see I'm simplifying it where I'm not and you could if you are really um, patient and if you wanted to do everything and draw everything that you see in the photograph to make it look like the photograph that is absolutely fine um, that's a whole nother um, couple of months probably to do that <laughs> because you have to spend some time then I mean you have to literally go in and really work it hard and and make sure that you get everything you see in the photograph and there's many artists that do that that that's really and that's how come they're wow when I see them I'm like wow because I, I just don't have the patience for that but there are some of you that that's the way you like to work and there's nothing wrong with that and that's actually very cool All right, now I'm getting up here, do some of my middle tones up there now. And really there's a lot of texture and things up here, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna generalize it and fake it up a little bit. And again, like I said, I don't paint every little thing that exactly like it is. I, I, I'm, I'm portraying what I feel it should look like. <laughs> I'm an impressionist. And so I, in this impression of what I think the items look like. It's almost getting too dark up here. I gotta make sure that this is still my light and the flags are in front of that. And why would I want to get detailed in this corner? I'm not looking to get detailed in that corner so that your eye goes up there too much. Though if I had everything really super detailed like in the photo, then yes, you can go in there and get all exactly the darks in there, but since I'm just doing an impression of it, then I make sure that this area is not as tight as some of the areas that are loose that are supposed to be tight, like my center of interest down here. That's going to be my tightest area, so I've got to work that area better than this area up here, tighter. Hey, Maria. Yeah, this is a neat reference. I would love to be here. <laughs> I, I have a feeling this is, it looks like there's um, either in, yeah, I'm not sure where it's at. There's, there's that, maybe Russia? I'm not sure where it's at, but I'm not putting in some of the, um, like the big light effects. So you could do that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in happening here. And it just it would take you time um, to put all that in there. And I'm taking it down a little bit from where it is and making that, I'm trying to get the impression that there's a lot of stuff happening by just doing what I just did there. Just a lot of, a lot of um, color and value, and but not very tight. So it's just interpretation of what this building should look like. The flags will be very tight and on in front of that because I want them to come forward. So I've got to do these first because these are lighter. See, I'm just tapping and doing all kinds of things. So I, I look for things in the picture that are are going to give me the kind of feel of what is happening in that area. Like this is a little bit dark right here, right above the, right above the, above the trolley. There is the rails of the, that's part of detail. And I'm actually part of detail stage now, um, detail darks, because I'm going to keep that as um, just bland, bland back there. And so now let's just go in and get all our details. And so I'm going to start out with the, try with the flags. And I'll use my flat brush again because they are rectangular shape. And so, and you can try to follow what the R in the photo, but I'm just going to make them up. I'm just going to go different colors and, and I'm just going to. And I'll throw some other colors in there, let them float. So 
See, when you're making a shape that is rectangular, I always say use a flat brush because then the, the edges are very easy to get compared to doing a with a round brush because then you have to actually draw the edges you get with a round brush. Maybe this one can be a little green in it. And then I'm using all the different kind of colors in here to get different kind of looking flags. My brushes, these are my brushes. These are the Becker Art brushes and um, they're Holbein Gold brushes. And so they're synthetic nylons. You can get them on my website. They're, you can get all six of them for $60. And they're, um, they're, you can ask any of my students, they're very good brushes for, for the price. I mean, they're very, and they last except for the handle sometimes, depending on how you treat them. If you leave them in the water, they will. The handle sometimes, the black will chip off like in this one. See the chipping off a little bit, you know, the, the, the black. And I, I use them so much and I have, I have a, my ones I use for my students. They're like about eight years old, but they're still using them and they're still great. You know, some of these flags are not going to make them as colorful. And actually, I, I forget, there's a couple of them over here that are going to be white. And so I'm just going to keep those, I'm going to leave those alone because I'll come back to those. I'm going to make this one over here white and then. I'm putting a lot of red into them because I want them to match down here. Then I think some of this is not, some of this is the cable car um, wires and so. I think I made a mistake on drawing that. And so I'm going to make the, some of the wires now. So I'm just going to take the wire and I could use my liner, my new liner brush, but I don't have it with me here at the moment. So I'm just going to use my rigor, my new fine line painting pens that I um, just showed you not too long ago. Those are amazing. Um, really love those things. It's a great way of making lines and I got to stand up for this because I'm going to, this is the trolley cable or lines as they go back they dissipate going across maria likes my brushes thank you maria thanks for the plug <laughs> Red here. I, I gotta go back with my smaller um, flat brush because now these these flags way back here, we can just gesture at some really light ones back here. By just putting them all the same color, kind of like they're way back there, because there are some way back there. Then these are a little bit closer, maybe a little bit more color. And you could do this even like a, as a big painting and where you have to be really detailed with the drawing. It all depends on your drawing and how detailed you get, you know, and, but you still want to keep the values the same. I mean, you want to have that lighter and as it comes forward, it gets darker. That doesn't change. Those kind of things don't change. Here, there's actually a flag. And I'm just going to put that in there, a nice big flag. Make it red. And there's all these flags here. And like I said, I'm going to be putting in the other ones with opaque colors. And here I'm not even at that stage yet. I, I use that at the very end where I make things thick. I, mean, I could make some of these thick, but I don't need to right at the moment. And don't make your flags all the same. And, you know, don't line them up like they're like they're the exact same flag. That doesn't with the wind blowing and everything. They're going to be all kinds of different shapes, and some will be sideways and. Now let's get some darks into the to the trolley here. And I 
can't even see my, the picture is pretty small on my screen, so I'm going to make a little bit of this up here a little bit. Maybe I'll make the trolley a little bit more detailed. So if you guys got questions, please ask them. You can always ask them later too. All right, now let's go in here and start doing doing the, the fine details. That's going to make this more important than the rest of the painting. I mean, this trolley is why we painted it in this area, this whole area here. So a little bit more detail in this area. And I'm actually using now, I'm using the paint pretty thick for these darks. I'm just making them thick because why not? You know, it's neat to have it really thick and just really pop out at you. It also helps my my students to start using more paint. Most students don't use enough paint in their, in their work um, to keep things dark. It's always really lighter than they actually wanted it. And so it actually starts teaching you how to use a little bit more paint in your in your work and be able to get the first wash and get it in right, right away. See, I'm just putting my darks now. These are my dark details. This is stage three. Step three is the dark details. And when I say dark details, anything that's dark and detailed, <laughs> basically, it's exactly what it, what it states. It's the dark details, step three. And it looks like this, these windows over here are really neat because then you can just see how it makes things also dark details indicate in the shapes of things and actually explain things then like what the side of the building is or where the side of the window is or where the window is exactly. The things when you're putting in the darks, they're actually explaining what's happening in the picture. Like what is that? Is the side of the window? And then we get a little. You see, it's not bad to use just solid black sometimes and you can use solid black and then put a color in there and I'm using it thick and so it actually pops forward and wait until I put the white in there or the white colors on top of other dark colors. Oh, it's just amazing, I love it. Here, I kinda like that being blurry over here. But I don't need this light here. And Let's put a little bit of detail over here, some darks. Let's make some of these like shapes a little bit harder etched and so they kind of explain a little bit more what's going on. Though I don't need to do a lot of that up over here because I don't want you to totally understand what's going on over here. It's just a gesture of what's going on over there. I'm going to make this area over here a little bit darker, but I want to make it all kind of float together as one little wash. Get some red, some dark purple. I just want it to kind of blend together and there's nice little shadows going through here. When you want to blur things out, make soft edges, and then you don't have to explain everything in those edges. Just let things be together. They can be out of focus. And it's a great way of making things out of focus is just soften the edges and let it bleed together. Not everything has to be explained in your picture to, to a T. I mean, people know what this is, right? I mean, you know it's, it's a street scene with a bunch of flags. And All right, so let's go our really super, super detailed darks now.
And now let's put my super lights. No lights back here. Here we have a light in the trolley, the part that runs along the wire. A lot of wires going around. And this one is like a... Let me just open this up a little bit here. Let me see what how big I want to see this bigger. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's even got a little sign on the top, and it's got some yellow. Okay, it's good to look at it sometimes closer up <laughs> the picture. <laughs> so we can make this really dark underneath here. There's a sign, a red sign up on top of the trolley right here, and I'll be putting that with opaques. See, I'm using gouache now, where I can make it nice and thick. And this is more like you're doing an oil painting then because you're putting it on very, very thickly, especially when you put the lights. Like I'm, I'm going to take some really thick white light color, especially with the white. I'll take like a white, pure white, and I will find little spots and I'll just put it on there thick where I want it to shine. I want places to shine. Maybe the back of the trolley. Maybe negative on the shoulders of some of these people tops of their heads if I if I didn't get that and the light and like you don't have to do this part where you're putting in thick but I you know I'm really I like the look I like the look of um, thickness to your paint and it really kind of makes it especially when you're doing like large colors like this like for these flags watch this you're just gonna Put in there and it's just gonna a nice look to it i enjoy that look it's okay i think you know a lot of people i was always taught never to use things thick um but i'm really like mixing both together now maybe parts of these flags can have some things on it that are lighter And you can use, well, I use, um, I use the gouache white, which is titanium. You can also use watercolor titanium white, and um, it's the it's the opaque white. The transparent white is Chinese white, and you don't want to use that because that's transparent and it won't it won't cover. A glistening light on. Oh, there's a little dappled light in here too. Watch this. I can put a little dappled light in there. Like on the building sides and maybe some light heads so that they're in the sun, like there's parts of it in the sun. How about some thick red? Just a plop a little thick red in here. And some of these flags, maybe some of the flags have some bright, 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 bright red, but it's very thick. Especially my center of interest. I want to keep it the center of interest right around this area, this area here. So, all right, let me look at it for a second on the screen. Let's see if there's anything else I need to do. If you guys see anything, let me know. <laughs> I think it's pretty close, guys. Dark. Um, anything on this side for dark? Let's make this side really dark right here. Just to punch that back a little bit. Uh, 
There's a sign that comes out here. A little sign. Put a little red in there. All right, guys, I think that's it. Unless you see something. Um, again, follow my follow me on um, YouTube here or subscribe, and you always get my latest um, what I'm painting or what we have for our uh, paint paint alongs. I usually put it out like I said I always put it out on on Tuesday in my newsletter, and on my website I usually change it on Tuesday and sometimes even you know Monday night you see what I'm painting. Side of the thing should be a little bit darker, I think. Here, let's make this. And then some thick white. And this will be a little lighter. All right, that's it. I think we're done. <laughs> and so, um, oh, one more, one more flag. I just, there's a I'm missing where I see it in here. Okay, right here. That's it. That is it. I think we're good. And now what I would do is, oh, I just gotta, let's see, we're gonna have to make a line out of that. A little splash there, so I'll make a small little line. There we go. All right, <laughs> so it's signed it right here or over here. It doesn't matter on this one. And then um, I'm going to wax it, wax it up, and then stick it into a frame and you're done. You know, wax it, and after you wax it, you just stick it in a frame. No more matting, no more glass, and you're all good to go. No more tape to take off of either, so you just see it the way it is. <laughs> so, all right, there's another Sunday morning. Um, hopefully not wasted for you. <laughs> and then... Um, it really helped me out a lot to see how to work on the board and also use some acrylics, not acrylics, but some gouache and use it thick. So if you want to um, take my class where I am teaching with gouache and watercolor both together, Dillman's is a place to go. Or if you are doing the Grand Marais um, paint event, I have a, a three hour, I think it's a three hour event there. All right. So until next time, till next Thursday.